Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Vasco and in this video we are going to take a look at the top for for the damaged Coda uh, or Rick and Morty uh, evil theme. I don't know where do you know this song from? Let me know in the comments below. You can check out my uh, finger style right here to know what we are going to do in this video and pretty much just explain every little detail so this is going to be a long video and also this song is it will require some practice it's not one of these songs that you learn for 10 minutes so be prepared and let's get it rolling all right so first thing i have to say is uh, this arrangement right here is in the original key that the song is in and it is made for a low G string ukulele because we need that lower tones okay in the intro we don't need it but after that in the main part we need it the next thing i have to point out is that we we'll use a lot of the pinky okay we we'll use the pinky on the left hand if you're usually not using it this song right here is a very good excuse to actually start using it because it will make you a lot faster when you want to play a little bit more complicated pieces like this one all right so with this said let's go to read the tab the first thing i want to point out in the tab are these little curved lines that you see between the notes all right this is called legato from italian this means that this is tied up in other words you have to play this as one whole thing and also it means that you're letting the note sustain okay so when you play the first one you should keep on hearing it while you're playing the rest of them all right, this is what it means. Okay, so we start with A sharp minor six. We're grabbing it like this, the A, E, and C string on the first fret, ring finger, putting on the third fret of the E string, all right? And with the right hand, we're doing C, A, E, A. Okay, C string, A string, E string, A string, all right? And on this chord, we're doing this four times. All right, so here it is. And after that we open the C string and on the E string with the pinky okay I know it's tempting to do it with any other finger but you have to do it with the pinky because after that the transition to the next chord is going to be very hard if you don't do it with the pinky all right so open C string then fourth fret of the A string and then on the first fret we remove the pinky and then get it back all right we do this three times on this chord and on the fourth time we change it a little bit so let's see how it goes and now open c e string fourth fret and now with the ring finger we get here on the third fret of the c string and again fourth fret of the e string let's do this line slowly And we go on the next line for which we stay on the E string exactly the same thing and we're doing exactly the same thing but the bass is moving here on the second fret all right and after that we go to G sharp diminished 7 I'm bearing the A E and C string and the pinky stays in the same place And here in the next two bars we have faster chord changes and uh, they're a little bit tricky so you have to put a little bit more time on it it's normal that this will take time okay this is normal don't get discouraged so we are grabbing the c5 on the third fret with the ring finger a and e string plucking together the c e and a string okay and after that only e string and then e and a string e string and then barring on the first fret with the ring finger on the third fret 
again the three strings and after that we remove the ring finger first fret of the E string A string E string and then open C and E string fourth fret first fourth first and now while holding this one we put the middle finger on the second fret of the C string ring finger on the third fret of the E string and then we remove the ring finger get it back and after that C string all right so let's go through this line slowly Okay, and this is the third line now of the intro, the third and last line, okay? So after we do the G7 thing, we move the pointing finger on the third fret and we bar the A, E and C string and with the middle finger on the fourth fret of the E string and we do C, A, E, A, okay? Twice. And then we go to D diminished, this time like this. Barring on the first fret, the A and E string, middle finger, second fret. And we do the same with the right hand. And quickly going to G, barring on the second fret, middle finger, third fret of the E string. And after that we have this pause. Now this pause is as long as any other bar before that. I'm just counting it in my head. It should be the same length as the ones before that. All right, so let's go through the whole intro slowly. and we start the next part now this is a lot to practice right now my suggestion would be to get the printed tabs in front of you and just go through it with the speed that you need to go okay don't rush it too much the truth is that this tutorial is probably not a one sitting tutorial because you need to practice the parts in between but also in the song there are easier parts the intro is kind of the complicated ones so if you want to let's continue to the next part which is the main part all right let's take a look what is happening here all right so when i see this line the first thing i have to point out is the repeat signs this is the beginning of a cycle this is the end of a cycle when you see the end of a repeating cycle you just get back until you see a beginning cycle all right it could be on the same line it could be on different lines and also one more thing you see these notes with the brackets this is called ghost notes and what it means is that they are quieter than the rest all right so in this case i'm grabbing c minor like this all right so i'm playing the c minor barely playing the c and e string and then it feels like an accent when I am on the A string, all right? And then we go to D diminished, barely playing the C string and accenting on the fourth fret of the E string. And again, barely playing the C string, all right? I hope you get it. All right, so let's go through that. And now here's the tricky part. We have to do this next part with the middle finger. All right, like this barring. 
And after that, with the ring finger, on the 4th fret, barely playing the C string. And now, this is why we need to do it with the middle finger and like this, because after that, for the next chord, what we do is just lift up the middle finger and slide it one fret backwards. And now we build the B diminished chord with the pinky on the 4th fret right here. All right. This can be tricky, but it is very worth the effort. All right. So after playing B diminished, barely playing the C string and then with the pointing finger on the 1st fret and then on the 3rd fret with the ring finger again, but this time on the C string. And we start repeating it. After the B diminished, it's good to play the C minor after that, the bass with the pinky right here because the transition is going to be faster. All right, let's go through that slowly. After we repeat it twice, we go to the turnaround. It is maybe the trickiest one, actually, because we have different rhythms. And this is the part that puts the whole thing together. I really like this one. So uh, we're grabbing C minor again, but the rhythm so far was pa, 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 pa. All right. Now the rhythm is going to be pa, 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 pa. And with the right hand, we're doing thump, pointing, middle and ring together, and then quickly pointing to thump. And starting all over with the thump. So the thump is twice fast, the thump, okay? Like this. Pa, pa. Pa, pa. All right? So we repeat this three times on C minor. And after that, we go to the second strange rhythm. And the second rhythm is something like pa 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 pa. I know that this sounds very ridiculous when you're listening to it right now, and maybe you're laughing at me, but actually this is an easy way to, to remember it. At least this is how I remember it in my head. And with the right hand, I'm doing thump, 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 then pointing a ring, and then thump, pointing a ring, like this. Right. This is the rhythm with the right hand. Uh, this uh, deserves a little bit of practicing on its own. Just grab, for example, C minor as I was right now. All right. And uh, one more funky thing right here is that the first hit of the thumb on this rhythm, we're playing whatever it was used in the chord before that. All right, so you can see here that where it goes to G sharp, we actually play C just for one and then getting to G sharp. All right, and after that, ring finger on the third fret of the C string, pinky on the fourth fret of the E string. Okay, so. All right, and then we go to G. Again, the first hit of the thumb of the right hand is from the chord before that. All right, and after that, on the B diminished, again, first hit of the thumb is from the chord before that. All right, and here we change the rhythm a little bit just to play this little melody on the first fret of the E string then second fret of the C string and then third fret. All right, let's go slowly through this part. get back to the main part again from here all right so after the intro we're doing the main part after that the turnaround and after that again the main part and after that the turnaround 
And after the second turn round, we have one more main part. And then we get to the exits, okay? I call them exit A, exit B, and exit C. All right, this is where we introduce this little outro melody that goes. And at the same time, in exit A, we're keeping the uh, bass of the chords. All right, so how we do that? I'm holding with the middle finger on the fifth fret to get the C, and then with the pointing finger on the third fret of the A string. And then on the A string, five, six, and then we slide the whole thing two frets up. Okay, 10, and then six right here with the pointing finger, all right? And after that, we slide one fret more. And this time on the E string with the ring finger on the eighth fret, the G and E string. And after that on the E, 10, 11. And here's maybe the trickiest. We hold on the fourth fret, the B, and on the eighth fret right here on the A string. And to the 10th, this is a little bit of a stretch. And then we slide it back to the 6th fret. And after this situation, we have to get back as quickly as we can to the C minor again. Alright, so let's go through this slowly. And after we have repeated the exit A twice, we go to the exit B where we keep the melody, but instead of keeping the bass notes as well, we're just playing C, all right? So I'm starting right here on the eighth fret of the A and E string, I'm barring them. And then I play the C string and the E string. And then I keep the melody, 10, 11. And after that, I'm playing the C, E and A string this time. All right. So we repeat this one more time. And we go to the exit C, uh, for which we're just keeping the melody without any bass in the back, okay? And this little three X that is on top of the repeat sign, it means that we're repeating this thing three times. And after that, we're ending on the eighth fret of the E string. And that's how we end. Okay, so this is a pretty complicated one, no doubt about it. Uh, but keep on practicing, it will happen little by little, line by line. It is very nice to be able to play it, I can tell you, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one and I'll see you super soon, bye!